Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Well over a year ago, I received an email from someone asking me if I had ever watched the Netflix series called Ripley, because Ripley is filmed in black and white, and it has a classic noir look to it. This person emailed me asking me if I could do a video demonstrating how to imitate this look on a photograph, and I told them that I would. Then I promptly forgot all about it, until... About four or five days ago, I received an email from someone else asking me the same exact question. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get a classic noir Ripley-like look on a photograph. I'm going to be doing my editing in Lightroom Classic, but everything I'll be showing you is applicable to just about any image editing application. Now, as far as the Netflix series Ripley is concerned. As you can see, it's like classic noir. It's kind of low-key. It's got a lot of high contrast, so it's a lot of dark areas, a lot of bright areas, and often the scenes are lit in this way, like this scene. It's got a lot of dark areas, and then there's a splash of light coming in that's illuminating the star of the show. In this image also, you can see a lot of dark areas, and then just enough light coming in to illuminate the star and to give us an idea of where he might be. That's kind of the classic noir look. The reason why I'm showing you this is because 90% of this is done in camera. And unfortunately, most of us don't have the means to have these elaborate light setups to light a set to achieve this kind of look. So we have to work with what we have. I personally don't have any images kind of that are kind of lit like this, but I'm going to do my best to show you how you could achieve a look like this on an image that is just lit with ambient light. Now, before I do begin, I do have a favor to ask. If you value my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. All right, let's get started. I have this image here of the Freedom Tower in New York, and it's just an unedited RAW file. And when I edit in black and white, I like to convert in black and white into black and white as soon as possible in my workflow, because I like to do most of my editing looking at a black and white image. So for this image, I'm going to immediately convert it into black and white by just clicking black and white button right here that's in the basic tab. Now, as I mentioned, this kind of classic noir look, it's it's low key. And if you don't have all that elaborate lighting equipment to light the scene the way you want it and expose it the way you want it, you most often probably were like me walking around the city taking photos and you just have kind of quote unquote proper exposure, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the exposure tab and just bring down exposure. So I'm going to make it dark. And then what we'll do is we're going to use radial gradients to add splashes of light. And if this sounds familiar to you, um, probably three, four years ago, I did a video demonstrating how to get a cinematic look. And in that video, it was for color images, I demonstrated how to get these splashes of light using radial gradients. And we're doing the same thing here. So, we converted to black and white. We brought exposure down just to make it darker. Now we're going to immediately go to those radial gradients. So we'll go to masking and we'll click on the radial gradient. And what I want to do is I want to put the radial gradient over where the light is already. For example, this kind of part of the building is lit. So I want to add a radial gradient here. So I'll draw it out, reposition it, adjust it as needed. I could come outside it and rotate it slightly I can pull this side. If I want to pull like either side down, left, right, top, or bottom, you'll notice if you click on the little handle and pull, it will pull the other side equally. If you want to just pull one side, hold in the Alt Option key, Alt if you have PC Option, if you have a Mac, and then you'll just pull that side all by itself. Kind of a neat little trick. All right, so let's say that's good enough. Also, this uh, center circles, uh, the feathering, I want it maximum feathered. So I'm going to push that in quite a bit. All right, so then we'll go to Tone, and what I'm going to do, uh, kind of might surprise you, but I'm going to make it brighter, and then I'm going to go to Whites and make Whites brighter, and then I'm going to go to Blacks and bring those down. So I'm adding a lot of contrast to this by doing this. And then we're going to go to Effects and actually 
clarity adds contrast too. So we'll add that. So you could see just a kind of a before after this. There's before and there's after. Before, after. Now I want to add another one. I could just draw another one or I could duplicate this one. And uh, I've seen people duplicate these gradients and they often are doing it wrong. Let me show you the wrong way. The wrong way is to right click on the little pin that's in the middle and go to duplicate radial gradient. That sounds right. But trust me, it's wrong because when you take it, oh, look at that. There is a bug in Lightroom. See how that's black? It shouldn't be black. It should be an exact. I didn't invert it or anything. That should be the exact gradient I have over here. But the reason why this is wrong, if this was the exact gradient, the reason why it would be wrong is because it's sharing the same controls. Meaning if I go to tone and I move exposure, it affects both gradients. You want the gradient to be independent of the other gradient. So let me get rid of that and ignore the black. Again, that's a bug in Lightroom and I'm going to report that bug to Adobe. The way you should do this is to right click on the little pin and then go down to duplicate mask. In this case, it's mask one. Then you'll get another one of these and then you could put it over here. And again, it's got that bug where it's, it's showing black, even though you know, it's got exposure up and everything, but you'll notice now this one's independent of the previous one. Now I can't use any of the duplication methods because I have this bug. So I will have to go up and create a new mask and then create a radial gradient. So I'm going to add one up in here because this is kind of a, a part people will look at. And why do I say people will look at it? Because it's got this kind of windows or grates there or whatever those are. So we're going to put one here. And similarly, I'll, I'll make it a little brighter. And I'm going to go to whites and make those a little brighter. And we'll blacks, not that black, dark, but brighter. And then we'll go to effects and we'll add some clarity. And then we'll go back to tone and maybe just make that a little brighter. All right, let me see if it works again on this one. I'm going to right click on the pin and I'm going to duplicate mask two. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, no, it works. See, that time it works. See how it's not working? And see how this one's independent of the previous one? All right. So that time it worked. I don't know why it didn't work before. It's a bug. All right. Now we can bring this out maybe a little more this way. All right. All right. That's not bad. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add another one, but I'm going to draw this one too because I don't want to waste time if it if it doesn't work. So we'll go to um, radial gradient. We're going to draw one out like right in here. Nice and thin and we're going to rotate it so it kind of fits this area here and we'll pull it out like that. And then here we're going to make this kind of a little brighter in there. And then we're going to go to effects and we're going to add some clarity there. Make it even a little brighter. It's got a little haloing going on there. So I'm going to move it this way a little bit. That looks better. Let me see if I can duplicate this one. I'm going to right click and duplicate mask three. I think it worked. I'll bring this one over here. Just kind of brighten that edge up a little bit. That looks maybe too bright. We'll bring that one down a little bit. Now I'm going to put a um, mask for the sky. So we're going to go up to create mask and we're going to select the sky. And then I'm going to immediately go to effects and we're going to add some clarity to the sky and some texture to the sky. Then I'm going to add one more mask to the subject. And then here I'm going to go to texture and we're just going to add some texture to the subject. So um, you could, I got a little mark here. I should get rid of that little sensor spot or I think it was raining a little bit when I was here. So we'll get, and we'll get rid of generative AI and get rid of that water droplet. And I think I'll finish it off with a vignette, a dark vignette like that. So there's before, there's after, there's before, and there's after this might be a little too bright so we could come in here select that pin by clicking on it so it's active go to the tone maybe just bring that down a little bit i think that looks better 
you get this circle here because I use the eraser tool on the sky. So you could do this and just update the sky mask. It'll just take a second. There you go. All right. Now there's before and there's after. Let's try another one so you can get an idea, a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, here is again the Freedom Tower. Uh, so similarly here, we're going to go to the basic tab first. And we're going to take exposure down. Well, first I got to do black and white. I'll take exposure down, make it pretty dark. And then we're going to go to masking. And I want to add a radial gradient over in here like this and spin it around and reposition it and spin it around. I want to bring this side in, but not the other side. So I'm going to hold in the option key to bring that in. Because if I move one side, it'll automatically move the other. But if you hold in the option key, it won't. It won't do that. And then here, we're going to bring exposure up. We're going to bring whites up. Blacks down. And then we're going to go to effects. And we're going to add some clarity. Okay, I'm glutton for punishment. Let's see if I do this the wrong way, as I mentioned many people do, by right-clicking and going to Duplicate Radiant Gradient 1. Ah, see. Okay, now this one worked. Let's just bring this one over here, because I want it over here, right? And we'll hold in the Option key and bring it this way and this way and then this way. Okay, now what I'm getting at is if I go to Tone and I start moving Exposure, see how it's affecting both? You don't want that to happen. So we'll get rid of this. The correct way to do it is to right click and then go down to duplicate mask. Then we could take it over there and it's independent of the other one. All right. So hold in that alt option key, bring this out this way, bring exposure down a little bit. And this one here, we're going to select, I have it too bright. We'll bring exposure down on that one too. All right, now we're going to just uh, select the sky. And what I'll do is I'll go immediately to effects and we're going to add some clarity to the sky, some texture to the sky. Then we're going to add, or we're going to add another mask for the subject. It should find the tower it did. We're going to add just overall clarity and some texture. And then we'll finish everything off with a dark vignette under effects like that. And there's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. All right, I'm glutton for punishment. Let's try one more. This one. All right, so again, the Freedom Tower. Uh, this one's a little more complex, and we have this really dark area over here, and then we have some brighter areas. So again, we're going to go to basic and immediately convert it to black and white, get that out of the way. Um, I am actually going to. Um, I think what I'll do actually is instead I'll go to masking and I'm going to get an objects mask and I'm going to try to select this building over in here. So I'm going to paint around the building like this, like this, like this, and then try to get as much in the middle as I can. So it knows I want to. I want to select this dark building. Let's see if it can do it. Let go. All right, it did. And now what I'll do is I'll go to tone. And for this dark building, I'm going to go to shadows and make it brighter. Kind of like that, I think. Bring the whites up a little bit. All right, excellent. Now, I'm going to make it even just a little brighter. Because the reason why I'm doing that is then we're going to close down masking. And then overall, I'm going to bring exposure down. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to masking and we're going to add a radial gradient to over here. And we'll straighten it out like that. And kind of bring it out like this. Maybe bring this in a little bit, hold in that alt option, can't bring this out that way. And then here we're going to make it a little brighter. We're going to open up the whites more, blacks down. We'll go to effects and we'll add clarity. 
And then I want to add another one in here. So I'm just going to draw it instead of duplicating it just in case that bug pops up again. So we'll um, go to another radial gradient and we're going to add one here. We'll do it like this. Pull it down, hold in that Alt Option key so you'll pull out one side and not the other. And then here we're going to go to Tone, brighten it up, bring up the whites, blacks, go to Effects, add some clarity. Then we're going to add another radial gradient. You can see, so it's just adding radial gradients. Similar if you did watch that video on the cinematic look on color images that I did a few years ago, you could see it's pretty much the same thing except we converted to black and white first and we're making more, we're adding a lot more contrast than we did in that other video. So, and then effects, clarity. And then I'm going to add one more, I think at least one more radial gradient, bear with me, over in here. And yeah, that, and then here we're going to make kind of a splash of light over there. And we'll add whiter parts whiter, darker parts darker. We'll add clarity. And finally, we'll just go and cut it short. We'll go to select sky. And with the sky, we're going to go to effects and add some clarity and some texture. So there's kind of a newer look to this one. There's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. Now again, 90% of that look is done in camera. So um, if you are in a situation where you have uh, like a lot of dark areas and then like splashes of light coming in, then definitely try to photograph that because then it will be a lot easier to achieve that look. For these more or less evenly lit images, at least the first two images were evenly lit, it's a little more difficult to achieve that look. This one here, I messed up a little bit on this pin right here. It's too bright. But you can do the best you can overall. And bring that down. Yeah. But um, you can see you could get a newer look, whether or not it looks exactly like that Netflix series Ripley is is debatable, but it is a, a new R look that actually works well, in my opinion, with architecture and buildings and things like that. So thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.